Hockey, the fastest game on earth, the game with players skating at 30 miles per hour and blasting pucks at 88, extends from October to April. For players and fans alike, its high-tension excitement keeps up all season. But after the Stanley Cup Series, the World Series of Hockey, the curtain drops abruptly. For the fans, now it's baseball. But what now for the players? For Detroit's starry Ted Lindsay, it's no problem at all. At his home in Kirkland Lake, Ontario, he has a big date with some chums. Lindsay likes nothing better than collecting some of the neighborhood kids for a fishing trip. Mentally as well as physically, he likes to get away from the winter's grueling hockey grind. They're off to that secret lake, away from crowds and excitement. That spells summer for Ted Lindsay. For Johnny Pearson, Boston's flashy number 23, summer means golf and again a starring role. As a top-ranking amateur in major tournaments, his effortless driving, powered by hockey-developed shoulders, catches the gallery's fancy. Accustomed to tension, he plays a long approach easily. In tournament play, a tricky shot means strain on player nerves as silence falls on the gallery. Easy does it, but not too easy. Oh no! In Chicago, Bill Mosienko's spectacular style has kept him a Black Hawk favorite for 10 years. But when hockey ends, it's bowling at Winnipeg. There, he is co-owner of a modern bowling academy. And the tinkle of the cash register is sweet music to Bill. But he's never deaf to a little challenge on the side. An expert bowler himself, he's never too busy to take on eager opposition. Set him up again, boy. The boss wants to show it wasn't just luck. Wango, another strike, and the Mosienko grin. Another Chicago favorite is Big Bill Gadsby, 190 pounds of defenseman. When hockey's over, it's a quick switch to Calgary Buffaloes, his hometown ball team. When he comes to bat, right fielder Gadsby knows when to let them pass and when to lean into them. On the ice, Bill Juzda plays it bumpy. And after Toronto Maple Leafs pack up, it's still bumpy going for railway fireman Juzda. He still has to watch time closely. He and the engineer have a big date with a heavy freight. There's no slick modern oil burner engine waiting for fireman Juzda. It's coal, endless tons of it, and an always hungry firebox. On the Canadian prairies in summer, it's hot. But heat and hard work add up to muscle and conditioning for next winter. In hockey's big time, Leo Reese, thunderous number five of Detroit's defense, is tough medicine. But with summer, there comes a startling transformation. Mr. Reese becomes a mild-mannered man of the business world as traveling representative of a large heating manufacturer. Poised and flawlessly groomed, He's a far cry from the hard skating rear guard of Detroit Red Wings, who packs more into a teeth rattling body check than any other player in major hockey. Playing goal is harsh on nerves, but Boston's Jack Jelano seldom gets ruffled. Nor does he ruffle easily in the off season, as he convinces a client of the value of life insurance. Jack treats a visit to a business mogul's office with the same calm efficiency that he stops a sizzling puck outside the Bruins' goal. Jack Jelano, National Hockey League rookie of 1950, McGill graduate and decorated Air Force veteran, makes interesting listening for any prospect. For Edgar Laprad, colorful number 10 of New York Rangers, persuading in winter comes easy. In summer, as owner of a sporting goods store, he works at persuading customers. <laughs> Ah, ah. 
never one to give in easily, Edgar just won't take no for an answer. But the customer wants the one he saw in the window, and with Edgar, in summertime at least, the customer is always right. Doug Bentley, captain of the Chicago Blackhawks, is a great natural scorer. The same goes for elder brother Max, a star center with Toronto Maple Leafs. But when summer comes, their opposition ends in the little town of Delisle, Saskatchewan. There, in the heart of the wheat country, the Bentley brothers work together on their highly successful farm. Like all prairie farmers, all summer long, their thoughts and talk are about the prospects for the harvest. The famous pair present a picture of serenity as they size up their crop of prairie gold. Contrasting indeed with wintertime when they wear opposing National Hockey League sweaters and chase each other round the ice. In winter, Chuck Rayner of New York Rangers concentrates on puck stopping. But come summer, you'll find him at Hockey Haven, his fishing camp near Kenora, Ontario. Chuck and his partner, Kansas City goaler Jim Henry, know the spots to take their guests, where the fish are always hungry, where skies are blue, and you can soak up the sun. Catching pucks may be fun, but this catch ought to taste a whole lot better. What makes Gus Mortson, Toronto Leaf defenseman, tough as nails? The answer lies in his summer work as a licensed mining prospector in the Canadian Northland. Days and nights in the open with a 45-pound pack on his back, develops shoulder muscles, breathing, and puts stamina into hockey legs. And no matter how tough the going, how long the search, there is always the possibility that it may lead to gold. The very next outcrop may be it. Does that glitter in the rock mean anything? Is it gold? Gus decides it's worth staking a claim. He needs stake posts, but that's easy. Those shoulder muscles go into action. Mortson leaves behind what's undoubtedly the farthest North hockey autograph on record. Penty Lund of New York Rangers has a shifty ice style, traceable no doubt to his summer occupation as a setter on a sawmill carriage at Port Arthur. It's strictly He-Man work, carrying a dangerous occupation label. But it means year-round physical condition and quicker reflexes for Lund, the only native-born Finn in the history of hockey. The carriage travels through the saw at 25 miles an hour and whips back at 50. That's shiftiness for you, and Lund uses it plenty on opposing defenses. Ever since 1942, tough wee Glenn Harmon has carried Montreal Canadiens number eight into action. But off the ice, he may be found, of all places, at work in a swank lady's hat shop. Now he's business manager Harmon. His wife, Juliette, the owner, is bringing a special hat for a special customer, Mrs. Elmer Locke. And here's Elmer himself. But he's here as salesman Locke, and he's out for new business. Glenn's a great admirer of his wife's designs, but he's not shy about saying what he likes. As for Elmer, the great Canadian center is in the paper bag business when he's not playing hockey. So he gives with the sales talk. He shows business manager Harmon how to score with a classy wrapping. The bag's a buy, he insists. And it looks as though the sale is in the bag, too. Okay, Harmon says he'll buy. Then Mrs. Locke reports on her buying. So runs the wide and surprising range of activities in Hockey Stars Summer. But the game bites deeply. No matter how successful, how enjoyable is the off-season, they all wait eagerly for the October face-off. To feel again the split-second thrills of hockey's big time. 